hello and welcome to my cake kitchen in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make my simple ultimate chocolate buttercream that was used to frost these luscious cupcakes made in a previous video and like most buttercream recipes i'm going to be taking you through my exact process talking you through why i employ certain processes and methods as well as handing you foolproof tips to getting the best results from making this rather luscious buttercream that is versatile to make so without having to waste your time let's dive right in before we start, let me just dispel some few myths in the buttercream making process. First of all, there is no particular buttercream recipe, method or process that's guaranteed to match a particular type of cake at all times. However, understanding the science of the buttercream making process and basic knowledge of the ingredient composition and how they affect outcomes goes a long way. In making buttercream, technique matters. Understanding the recipe and the process is important, but having a good understanding of the technique used in the process will help for better results. So for instance, in this recipe, you'll find I do things quite differently. It doesn't make the other recipes on the market bad. It just means I'm optimizing for certain personalized results, which is the objective of my process. When making buttercream, good quality butter matters. Good quality butter is the base of any great tasting buttercream and for what it is worth, I encourage investing in good quality ingredients when making buttercream. But besides taste, consistency matters, which is how the butter appears whether it's soft, hard, oily or firm enough for use. For example, over here I have a bowl of butter. Making simple buttercream requires butter at room temperature, but after leaving this bowl of butter overnight on a countertop, it's still cold to touch and when pressed in the middle, it is hard. This kind of butter consistency won't yield great buttercream results and it's likely to not cream easily and may break in the buttercream making process. However, when swapped, the hard looking butter for a soft consistency of butter, I have butter that looks spreadable but not too soft or oily. I popped the same hard looking butter in the microwave on defrost setting for 30 seconds at two 15 seconds intervals and this is the right butter to start my buttercream with. Starting with the right butter in terms of quality of taste and consistency will surely guarantee great results. To make this chocolate buttercream, I'll be making the base recipe from American buttercream, which uses icing sugar, unsalted butter, and vanilla plus a pinch of salt. The salt is to enhance taste by balancing the sweetness of the sugar, but can be eliminated and a quantity of the unsalted butter replaced with salted butter. More details of this replacement is in the description box for you. In a mixing bowl though goes in 500 grams of unsalted butter. A stand mixer is used here simply for convenience due to the quantity of amount to be made. The ingredient quantities can however be scaled down for less buttercream and I have a video linked below showing the same recipe in a beginner's basics series where I make this buttercream using a hand mixer. For this American buttercream base, I am using a whisk attachment for creaming simply because I need to incorporate more air quickly into the butter to change the consistency from solid cube of yellow looking butter to a pale of white looking consistency. And here's a quick comparison of the butter started with and what we have now. This part of the process took four minutes with the bowl scraped in at the first two minutes mark and at the fourth minute. Scraping the bowl in helps to bring in all the butter for a uniform mix and into the creamed butter goes in 500 grams of sifted icing sugar. Notice though I am using the one to one ratio which uses same quantities of icing sugar to butter. This will result in a more balanced taste of sweetness without the buttercream being too sweet. Next goes in some vanilla extract which is a Mexican blend. While using pure vanilla extracts is encouraged in making buttercream, this brand of vanilla blend enhances the flavor of my chocolate buttercream that I prefer. Be advised though, this may discolor your buttercream if you are aiming for a plain white looking American buttercream. Discoloring of the buttercream here isn't exactly a concern as we are going to be turning this buttercream recipe into chocolate buttercream. With the sugar and vanilla plus a pinch of salt added into the bowl, the bowl is covered with a tea towel and mixing starts on slow to prevent a splash of icing sugar powdering the air. After the ingredients are mixed together, 
The towel is removed and the mixer is turned on high for five minutes. At two and a half minutes in, the mixer is stopped and the bowl scraped in to help the ingredients along for a uniform mix. The mixer is set back to mix for another two and a half minutes and that's five minutes done. At this stage, we have American buttercream, which is a very simple method of buttercream to make, especially if you're a beginner. However, to rid of the air bubbles due to the use of the whisk attachment, the whisk is now swapped for a paddle attachment and the buttercream mixed on low speed for three to five minutes depending on the setting on your mixer. On this K-Mix stand mixer, I use the fold function and after five minutes, here is our American buttercream done. But this is far from the chocolate buttercream promised. So to make this into a chocolate buttercream, we're going to be freezing this buttercream before the next stage. I don't use American buttercream a lot, but I make batches which I freeze just for making this type of chocolate buttercream. The good thing here is that the buttercream can be made in advance and saved up to 24 hours, allowing the flavors to develop before turning it into chocolate buttercream. After 24 hours in the freezer, this is the consistency of buttercream we have. If this was to be used simply as American buttercream, this would have been left on the countertop to come to room temperature before use or the process could be hurried along by melting a portion of the buttercream into the frozen batch and creamed back to use for frosting, filling or topping cakes. But to make this into a smooth tasting chocolate buttercream, a portion of this buttercream is going to be added into a bowl of chocolate chips. Normally, I don't measure anything here and tend to eyeball the process. But to help you get better results, I have about 900 grams of buttercream here and 150 grams of frozen buttercream is going to be added to 300 grams of chocolate chips, which has about 55% cocoa solids. I am aiming for a very rich chocolate flavor here, but for this method, you can reduce or increase the quantity of chocolate as you prefer and you'll achieve great results nonetheless. Now, the chocolate and buttercream are to be melted together to make a ganache mix and this has to be done slowly, observing closely to ensure the chocolate doesn't burn. I use a microwave at 50% power for 4 minutes at 2 minutes intervals and after melting the chocolate and buttercream together, the ganache is stirred into a smooth paste and set aside to cool slightly. Ensure this is not too cool because we need it slightly warm to melt the frozen buttercream that is left in the stand mixer. Now in a stand mixer containing the rest of the frozen buttercream goes in this dark chocolate ganache paste. With this process, the ganache whilst warm breaks down the frozen buttercream during the mixing process, turning the mix into a smooth chocolate buttercream. The end result is a smooth, rich tasting buttercream with no buttery aftertaste and not too sweet. It has a melt in the mouth mouthfeel and just the right amount of chocolate that isn't overpowering or sickly sweet. When creamed together for another 5 minutes using the paddle attachment, the buttercream is then transferred into a bowl set for use later. This can be saved in a fridge or freezer for up to a month. This is my preferred buttercream for topping my chocolate cakes and was used for these cupcakes made in a previous video. It is completely versatile and the same method can be employed using any type of buttercream as a base. And over here, I have French buttercream as my base. I use this method simply to avoid some of the issues that may come with using cocoa powder in making buttercream. But that's a discussion for another video. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos such as these and more. These chocolate cupcakes that had this buttercream as a topping is right on screen for you to watch. And there's another video I think you'll enjoy watching. But otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.